Hey everybody, um, welcome back for another, another little drawing session. Um, thought maybe I'd kind of talk a little bit about thumbnailing, um, at least one approach, one approach that I like to do, which is kind of drawing in pen, uh, thumbnails are an easy way to develop some kind of confidence uh, with with a pen and mark making and all that. Um, I've been wanting to kind of get back to doing a little bit of oil painting, but more in uh, in an illustration sense. I used to do a lot more of it, but it was always like portraiture like very academic in that regard and which is funny because the original reason I got into painting was for illustration uh you know I always looked at all the old the book covers and stuff and they were just so cool still are um <clears throat> so uh you know that made me just want to pursue that and of course eventually learned about all these other avenues for illustration um, and entertainment and stuff like that um, kind of went some different routes but I'm really wanting to sort of get back to not necessarily my roots, but get back to some of the stuff that really inspired me to do all these things to begin with. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to go crazy. I do have a tendency to bite off a little more than I can chew, especially when I'm either getting back to something I used to be more comfortable with or uh, getting into something new. Um... And I'm going to try to avoid that. I want to keep it simple. I'm not going to go out of my wheelhouse. So, you know, come up with some cool warrior woman. Um, maybe throw a big cat in there for good measure. Um, keep it simple. Uh, fully keep it a little loose. Um and uh, go from there, see where it takes us. I'm not trying to break the mold on this one, just really trying to get back to, uh, I don't know, something something to kind of lend some variety. I do pretty much all pencil sketching uh, and a little bit of digital illustration at work. Um, and of course, I will always love <coughs> pencil sketching, but I'm also the type of artists that really kind of thrives on having some variety in in my mediums um, I get I get a little not bored but I will come up against some artist blocks um, when I'm just using the same medium over and over because um, then I, I'm not kind of inspired anymore. It's not to say I don't love that medium anymore. I'm just not, you know, feeling it after only doing that for months or whatever. Um, so I know some people have asked, like, how, how do I overcome, like, an artist block? And usually for me, it's just kind of... <clears throat> Uh, it'll be usually one of two things, and often they actually kind of go hand in hand. And and I'm only speaking personally. I'm not, you know, saying like, oh, this is the cure for artist block. But generally, it does have something to do with just kind of stagnating, right? Probably doing a bit of the same thing over and over for a little too long um, 
Variety is the spice of life. I hate that saying, partly because it's so damn true. Um, <clears throat> so, oftentimes, I'll overcome an artist block by, one, switching up my mediums. It could be as simple as going from pencil to pen or maybe pick up watercolor or oils or gouache or acrylic or whatever um, and two usually I will just pour over um, all the artists work like all the art that I know inspires me right and it's not to say that I mean, some of it maybe you're not in the mood for, but you never know. So I feel like it's important to have a very large library of, of artist work that you can always go back to and hopefully find um, some kind of inspiration there. And it might be something you've looked at a hundred times before, and this time you see something new that gives you some ideas um, and, uh, uh, for me, that usually does the trick. So, honestly, I'm, I'm rarely uninspired or blocked for very long. Um, and one, because... It makes me really nervous, <laughs> so I do everything I possibly can uh, to overcome it because I do draw for a living, right? So I gotta come in every day and essentially be inspired. They count on me to do that. And so that's part of being uh, a professional, right? Is you can't just kind of give in to those whims of, of like, eh, I just don't feel like doing it today. So, sorry guys, I know the clients are paying us a shit ton of money, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. You know, like, I don't have that option. And no professional really has that option. Um, not if they want to keep doing it. Um, even if you're just painting, like, basically your own stuff, right? Uh, still got to pay the bills. You still got to, you know, sell those paintings. Um, so you can't really just give in to that lack of inspiration. You got to find that inspiration. And, and as we do that, we get better and better at finding it. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, that's my little brief note on, on artist block. Um, and I'll probably talk about it more in other videos. There's inevitably going to be overlap because, you know, none of this stuff exists in a vacuum. Um, but back to the, you know, what we're actually working on here. Again, not trying to break the mold, not trying to go way far out of my wheelhouse. It'll be challenging enough just getting back to an old medium. Um, and so one of the, again, just warrior, warrior girl. Um, I always do my best not to make these things gratuitous, right? Even if they're scantily clad or in many of my sketches pretty much nude um I, I just one i'm an artist i see nothing wrong with nudity um it's you know it's easy enough to kind of imagine that cultures could be a little different and um maybe people who aren't <laughs> so prudish might you know have nothing wrong with see nothing wrong with with nudity since it's kind of that natural state of things right 
Um, <clears throat> and but I do my best also just not to objectify anybody when I'm doing this. Unless it serves some kind of story purpose, right? If someone has been enslaved and they're being shamed and whatever, fine. If it's a story trope, awesome. Um, but otherwise, I, I just... I don't know. I feel like confidence is amazing and it's sexy. And so the upside of that is that you don't have to sexualize the nudity again, unless it's a story moment, nothing wrong with the little bit of uh, sexuality. Right. But that's not what this is, you know? And if you think about it, you see a beautiful person, beautiful woman, beautiful man, whatever your preference is, they're beautiful, no matter what. They can just be lounging around. They can just be sitting there drinking coffee or whatever. They don't have to be doing something sexual to be attractive. And most of the time, we're not doing something sexual. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll just move right past that stuff and... And, you know, just assume that whatever world she's in, this is kind of the natural state of things. Um, and all I'm doing right now is exploring some possibilities for poses. What I haven't decided is how quiet... I want this to be. I'm no matter what, I'm not going to go for any kind of action in this particular piece. Um I've always been a little more of a fan of quiet moments. Um <clears throat> I feel like they show us a little more of of the character. Um kind of I guess it it's a little more insightful to see someone's everyday state of being, right? I mean, whatever Conan's everyday state of being is action. <laughs> so, so there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> but I've always preferred a little quieter moments. I like the subtlety involved um, in that kind of uh, illustration. Uh, I have a lot of fun with that. But I'm just, I'm just looking to see what, what inspires me to kind of go the next step uh, in this image. I think we'll give her a sword on her back. Um, and so one, couple things, um, what I'm thinking of currently is like, okay, you know, if, if I were to give this a title, right, like, uh, the journey begins or something, you know, and that evokes a certain feeling, right? And so don't underestimate the power of a title. Uh, because it can tell you, give you just enough story in as few words as possible to push something away from just a random whatever, you know. So I always, always try and have at least a, a short story, essentially. I mean, literally, can be a few words, but at least that gives me something to... <clears throat> kind of illustrate around um, maybe 
Maybe Big Kitty is sniffing the air, right? Getting a sense for this new place that they're going off to. Ooh, I like the ears back. Um, some of my thumbnails, I mean, you'll see. I'll sometimes I'll end up with figures that have like seven different arms because I'm I'm just trying to uh, find some shapes, you know, and silhouettes that are that are interesting, uh, especially for a simple painting. The silhouette is so important um, because you don't have a bunch of other stuff in there to um, kind of do some of that heavy lifting for you. So you like, it's like a short story, you know, every word counts because you don't have a hundred thousand words, you know, to, to distract people with, you know, maybe you only have, <clears throat> have, I don't know, 25,000 you know, for a short story. I know it sounds like a lot, but uh, I think that ends up being, I don't know, 100 pages or something. So, uh, maybe something like that. <clears throat> so, uh, and really quick, I'm just sketching in a, just a Cottonwood Arts book. It took me a while to warm up to this um, I don't love working on bright white paper. Um, it's also a little smoother than I like for most things. Um, but it, this has kind of turned into my, like, thumbnail book. So, um, I, I do really like it for that. Um, I'm drawing right now with a pilot Ilabo. Uh, used to be called the pilot uh, Namiki. Namiki. Uh, it's a fountain pen, but I got a custom nib for it from nibs.com. Um, they are amazing. I got it with the Spencerian customization, which gives it a ton of flex. Um, it is not cheap. <laughs> I won't lie. This, this pen, if you were to get, I think they still list it as the Namiki on nibs.com. Um, I, this is the resin body. Um, so getting the pen with the custom nib will run you almost $300. Um, if you are not an expert. If you're not a professional, I would not recommend this. Uh, it's a lot of money, and if you spring that nib, you're going to be so sad. Um, hell, I'll be sad if I ever spring this nib. Um, so it takes a lot of control, right? You have to have finesse, and you have to know how far is too far. Um, but the beautiful thing with this is the amount the amount of flex that it has um, and the amount of variety, right? Um, the fact that I can, I can turn it on its side a little bit and get some very, very subtle, subtle marks, turn it back straight, you get some darker ones and you want to add some nice weight to the lines, um, it gives you the ability to do that. <clears throat> um, a beautiful pen, but mind you, I also have done a fair amount of drawing with a steel nib dip pen, right? Um, and that's what this is based on. It's super convenient because I can just load an ink cartridge in it. Um, I don't have to constantly uh, dip it, 
but for certain things, I will still go back to a dip pen, especially if I want to do a painting where the drawing is in the final. Um, chances are I'm gonna do that in India ink, and I'm not gonna put India ink in this. I'm not gonna put a waterproof ink in this pen, because if it clogs, again, I'll be very sad. So uh, I stick with calligraphy ink, fountain pen ink. Um, currently, I, I just took one of the cartridges for this pen because uh, I'm not a big fan of ink converters. They don't hold as much ink. They're a little annoying. Um, so I tend to use empty cartridges and I just use a crafting syringe, just like a, just has a blunt needle. Um, and I'll fill it with my own ink, right? So right now I'm using the Diamine Ancient Copper fountain pen ink. Um, so I love this color. <clears throat> so actually I'm kind of digging this. I like that one, but um, but maybe there's something else. So the two moments that I'm considering, right, is the journey begins or the adventure begins. Um, and uh, emerge victorious. That's what I'm, those are my two topics that I'm gonna kind of thumbnail around. Two very different sort of modes. Um, one is this kind of like, you know, stealing herself for this long journey ahead. And the other one is like weary after battle, um, but she came out on top, right? So uh, yeah, two, two pretty different uh, moods there, um, but both appealing to me. Both lend themselves to some good storytelling. Um, without having to go crazy, so. One of the things I'll also do is I'll vary my approach a little bit. I don't, I don't like to approach everything in exactly the same way. Um, so even within the thumbnails, sometimes I'll, you know, do these quick little marks uh, just to flesh out a gesture and see what comes of it. Because sometimes uh, some accidental marks too can can spark ideas. So 
a lot of this is just leaving it as open as I can uh, for the image to kind of create itself in a way. Um, I know it sounds simple and you know probably makes it sound a little easier than it actually is, but <laughs> um, you know if we don't try and just completely control uh, everything, um, oftentimes that'll that'll leave some room uh, for some fun things to happen. I've been getting a lot of questions lately. Well, I should say I've been getting the same question a lot lately, <laughs> uh, which is um, anatomy and where can people learn anatomy and uh, what books <clears throat> did I study? And, um, honestly, I. I couldn't point to one thing. Um, at the end of the day, at the core of all of this art stuff is mileage. Um, there is no way around that. Absolutely no way around it. You have to draw a lot. It's the only way to really understand how to do all this stuff and, and understand how to put it down in a very interesting way. Um, that being said, yes, you need some academic knowledge as well. Um, but the reality is you can find information on anatomy anywhere. I mean, you just Google human anatomy and <laughs> it's, you know, it's everywhere. I didn't really have that for, you know, my, like when I was younger, when I was a kid. You know, but I mean, since junior high, um, just as an artist, I, I don't know. I knew that I, I needed to understand the human body more. So every opportunity I had in school, I would do like a report on the skeletal system or a report on the muscular system and, you know, and I'd illustrate it and, and so that I could learn and, um, uh, and nowadays I, I mean, there's so much information out there that, uh, it's, it's like, it's at your fingertips. So it honestly, it should not be a mystery, um, as far as learning the anatomy in an academic sense, um, applying it one, uh, figure drawing is, is pretty important. Um, whether it's from photos or from life, but from life, that's what'll give you more of an understanding of how to kind of apply the academic knowledge. Uh, and it'll give you just a sense of how things move a bit more. Um, and then on top of that, it's also paying attention to like which muscles push and which ones pull, right? So that 
you're not just drawing people with every muscle flexed because that'll actually make it look very static because subconsciously we know that you can't move if every muscle is flexed. So oftentimes it's uh, taking the pose yourself, like whatever pose you're trying to draw, uh, take that pose and, and feel where the muscles are firing um, <clears throat> and pay attention to that and start to sort of learn a bit more about kinetics. Um, it helps if you're physically active in some way. Uh, I grew up doing martial arts uh, for many years. Of course, I haven't now I haven't done it in many years, <laughs> but what it gave me was a, a good understanding of the kinetics of the human body, right? Um, how we move, what, what creates balance, um, and um, just kind of what muscles are involved um, with any given movement. Um, toying also with how big and monstrous I want this cat to be. Um, I'm a huge fan of just making them ginormous, you know? <laughs> Not to say that there aren't cats this big it just I'm basing this more on a jaguar and they don't get this big they get big they're dense and pure muscle um, but this is like a jaguar that's the size of a tiger so fantasy world I can do what I want So kind of leaning toward that one. Um, I dig it. Uh, but I'm going to also figure on this page, I'll do this whole, you know, journey begins thing. And then this page, I'll do a few ideas for emerge victorious.
A lot of what I'm trying to focus on here is just some interesting kind of weight shift. Um, drawing an interesting narrative standing figure, like where they're just standing there, um, is actually one of the more challenging things. Like how do you make it not just look like just some random uh, thing where, where you just didn't feel like drawing or painting in action? You know, that it's a challenge. Like how do you inject some narrative into someone just standing there? Um, as I said before, a lot of that can be done um, with um, a title that can go a long way toward um, kind of fueling the viewer's imagination. Um, and it's also just uh, some, inter some good, good weight shift and um, you know, that, that will go a long way as well. Uh, because it, it'll just look more natural. It'll look more like an actual person that's, uh, that's standing there, not just, um, you yeah, know, not just a posed, uh, model, essentially. I like these two quite a bit. Um, I do feel like she needs a sword somewhere. totally cheating because putting it on the far side means I don't have to worry about exactly how it's attached. <laughs> and we can hint at that anyway. Put some kind of like a shoulder strap. More like she just slung it across her shoulder. <coughs> I'm debating if this would actually be a spear or treat it more like a quarter staff where it can double as a walking stick, but I don't know. I kind of like the spear. It sort of makes sense that maybe she'd start with a ranged, a little more of a ranged weapon, right? Give her a little more reach. And then... Either throw it down in tight quarters or, uh, you know, if it breaks or she loses it, it gets, it gets disarmed, then she'll whip out the sword. <clears throat>
No, we'll try this uh, battle weary idea. You know, head down. She's tired. Um, weapon will be hanging at her side. Here we'll just, you know, her weapon kind of hanging down, implying that maybe she's tired, kind of resting on the rocks. And rather than, you know, drawing the entire aftermath of a, of a battle, um, I, I would probably imply it more by having some blood on the blade, on the rocks, and then, uh, you know, with, with the title, that kind of gives us everything we would need to know, right? Blood on the rocks, blood on the blade. Never underestimate the power of smudging. The cat is maybe, you know, panting and tired. Um, so I do like that too. I ain't mad at it. Um, I don't 
wouldn't mind something a little different too, right? Maybe she's looking up, taking in the fresh air and the cool breeze after a battle. I like the feeling of this as well. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, that's a huge part of this, right? What we're usually trying to do with, uh, with thumbnails and ultimately with the finish as well is convey a mood, like capture the feeling of a, of an action, you know? And I don't mean that in a, dramatic like throwing a punch kind of a way just and any any action you know the act of you know, just taking in the the world after a battle like you're still alive and that makes you awesome um so <clears throat> You know, anything that, that starts to kind of convey, convey these feelings will make you more, more successful. But that's always, that's the big challenge, right? Like what, <clears throat> speaking of multiple limbs, right? I'll do this often. You're like, no, nah, well, what happens if I move? Move it over. Because I don't always, <clears throat> while I'm fine with them being in a stable position, I don't always want things like straight up and down. And the only reason I'm not totally sold on this is because um, I also I'm not a huge fan of her being like totally facing us. <clears throat> um, I mean, you can. It just it makes a very direct, uh, like more direct than I might want you know, interacting with the viewer, so to speak. <clears throat> Something like this kind of allows us to not break that fourth wall, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't know. Big cat would be in here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Maybe it'd be on this side. Or she, she would be on this side. So I see her more as a, <clears throat> as a girl. So that one looks like a boy. So does that one, the big head, right? Males tend to have much larger heads proportionally. You can see that in pretty much any cat. House cats included. <laughs> Let's 
so I was thinking I might combine those two, see how that looks, but like I said, not totally sold on her completely facing uh, the viewer. So, maybe we, uh, we turn her. But I like that stance. I think that's kind of cool. I like the, you know, sort of balancing between a couple rocks. Um, I think that's kind of tight. Maybe I won't something like this uh, not have her hair kind of blowing uh, just to convey more of a feeling of, of just weariness um, it's like even her hair is tired <laughs> I don't know if that's possible Right, so anything we can get that's kind of just sort of hanging down will will give us a little more of a feeling of, of this like heavy heaviness. Everything feels heavy now, but she won. And that's what counts. It's got a bit of a Red Sonia vibe. Um, I might go that route, but not with the, I'm not a fan of all the coin armor that she has, <laughs> scale mail or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, I mean, I, I don't hate it, uh, but I wouldn't mind some of it as a decorative motif, maybe. Maybe this one. Hmm. It's a little hard, right? She's not gonna just never sword waving around in her cat's face, but... Thank you. 
maybe this one's crouched, taking a breather. mind that but maybe I would have her just this hand hanging down so that we could just put that sword down that um, the other thing I did was take this uh, Kaime natural hair uh, brush pen and I filled it with the same ink same thing just took an empty cartridge uh, they come with these oil cartridges to kind of keep the brush supple you know until you're ready to use it um, so I actually just washed that out with some warm water the oil will do weird things with the ink if you don't wash it out. Um, and I just filled it with the same ink, the diamine, ancient copper, um, just as a way to kind of uh, play nicely and get some, some other kinds of marks, you know, brush marks that you can't really get any other way. Um, Not necessary, but you know, can kind of help to add some appeal to some of this stuff. Um, you know, it, it, one of the things it does is basically just add some variety of, of marks, right? And that's a crucial aspect in art, is varying your marks. Because um, otherwise, if you, you kind of just do the same thing all over the image, um, not not always that interesting right it will be for a minute as people are looking but then subconsciously it's kind of like okay cool got it i see what they did all over and yeah that's it <clears throat> so it's good to just lend some variety as much as you can um, just for the sake of, of keeping the viewers engaged, really. I mean, that's all we're ever trying to do with this stuff at the end of the day. Just keeping... Keeping the viewer engaged. Um, I've been thinking about maybe filling the fountain pen with uh, black ink only because then I can use the the ink that's actually meant for the brush pen um, which is a little bit thicker uh, this ink is is very thin and what that does is it just like wants to run as soon as you put it down uh, on the paper, so it it has uh, has this kind of tendency to make the brush feel like extra soft, 
you know, it's, it's difficult to get super fine lines because the ink just wants to run out. Uh, you can get the fine lines, but not as much, you don't have as much control as you would if, if you were using the, the ink that was actually meant for this pen uh, or another brush pen. Um, it just tends to be a little thicker. It's more along the lines of Sumi ink. Um, I mean, it basically is. It is Sumi ink. So I've been thinking about that. It's just, it's hard to give up this color. <laughs> I love this color. Um, it's very satisfying for me. Um, I really like this one, but I'm kind of leaning toward this just as something that's a little more um, uplifting. That's kind of what I feel like, like uh, focusing on. Um, Yeah, the whole embarking on a on a new adventure, and um, I've always always really gravitated toward that theme. Um, I'm sure most of us have. Uh, it's just something that I constantly kind of come back to. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, it's always, I don't know, it's a common, common theme, at least in my head. Um, I think, you know, because I try not to just, like, draw or paint the same story over and over, even though I've done a shit ton of, like, naked elves and big cats and... <laughs> What are you going to do? <clears throat> so, anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know. I hope some of this was helpful. Um, I will get more into some other methods of that I use for thumbnails as well. Because, I mean, thumbnailing, let's face it, is such a crucial part um, of, of illustration. Like, you kind of, you have to do it. Um, so I do have some other methods that I'll employ at times as well. Um, this is just kind of the quickest, easiest way you can do this anywhere, coffee shop, whatever. So, yeah, uh, that's always really nice. Um, yeah, so I will say... Thanks for join me, joining me as I do these. Woohoo! Alright guys, see you on the next video.